Infinity Train is an amazing show that deserves a fourth season. There, I said it, that's the whole video. Or at least it should be, but seeing as the corporate AT&T Hydra has all its heads shoved right up its ass, I guess it's up to me to step up and make money off of it. So, here's a video about Infinity Train Season 1. Support it because maybe, maybe, if people like Infinity Train content, they'll stop fucking up DC enough to realize where the real money's at. Now, for everyone who's made it this far and still doesn't know what Infinity Train is, let me break it down. There's a train, and it goes forever. Congratulations, now you can be confused and terrified like the rest of us. But if you want a little bit more, you'll have to wait till later, or just look it up. Episode 1, Cartoon Network's Firefly. Starting in the Midwest, where all stories go to leave, we meet our main character, Tulip, who is on screen for 12 seconds and Tumblr has already claimed her. But there's only two things that can excite Tulip, coding camp and not talking about the divorce. Life can be pretty great when you're avoiding your problems, till the first problem sits you down and tells you that the second problem dropped the ball. Onion Breath is having a real hard time with her parents being too busy to take their mutual obligation to camp. No friends or other family is stepping up, leaving the girl in green to try and walk there at night in the snow. It's 300 miles, oh wait, Okay, what's wrong with her? Why is she being so illogical? Doesn't she know she's creating plot holes? All right, here's the train everyone keeps talking about. Now watch it abduct a child. Not realizing she's on the train, our girl runs into this show's Wheatley. Give yourself a like if you know, if you got that reference. Are you my mom? No! So you've come to bring me the sweet release of death. This is one one. He's lots of fun. Looking for his mom and depressed. I love them. Dynamic duo is formed, Tulip's traveling, one one's just tagging along. Get our first look at the monolithic train. Girl is just taking all this a bit too well. Rushing ahead to the grid car, which is super fun, till she realizes she ain't in Wisconsin anymore. Best case scenario, it's Mars. Worst case scenario, they're on a different dimension with cockroach dogs. Okay, new warning. Stay on the train or get your life force sucked out of you. <laughs> so like, real talk. At least, like, at least 30% of the people who come onto this train should be dead. And I say that as a minimum. If less than that die, then people are just not trying hard enough. Tulip and her ball buddy make their escape, thanks to the dog not figuring out what the up button is. Girl has a glowing number on her hand, and the mystery only thickens from here. And if you thought that was a eh introduction, well, you're right, these are all 12 minute episodes. This was broken into halves. So your one season of content is only five episodes. Episode two, cat is here to abuse children and ruin your self esteem. Also it talks. So we're living in a world where trains can create anything you can imagine and it wastes this potential on crossword puzzles. Like my God, this might be actual hell. All work and no play Tulip is not happy with one one's asinine foreshadowing. Girl got her game face on, and maybe just a little bit not being completely honest about what her non-divorced parents were like. Okay, sometimes there was pizza during the work and hose fights, but all of that was still under the work umbrella. This small shift in the narrative leads to the magic number going down. Tulip doesn't know that, so she panics and can only think about the destination with rules and other restrictions. All I'm trying to say is I think Tulip would be the girl that would definitely read the terms and conditions if she had the time. Tulip is thinking inside the box while the train wants her to get out of it or kill her trying. Next car has a cat in it. Donut. This hat. Bon appetit. Donut. Am I going too fast for you? Sketchy salesman is French and clout chasing, saying she knows a conductor of the train, but at least lets Flower Girl know she won't die when her number hits zero. One one was just reminding her that death is inevitable. Un you made me think I was gonna die! It would be surprising if you never died. Cat Scam talks a human to fixing your ship, finding the missing part under sentient water, getting the gear in exchange for a heartfelt, but very cheap gift. Fixing the thing, Cat promises to go talk with the conductor and sort out this whole mess. Goodbye forever, Miss Tulip. And about three minutes after that, guilt sets in and the dumbness of her trusting a complete stranger who was a cat, no less. And beneath all of the logic and lies she tells herself, Tulip admits 
She did what she did out of desperation, and then proceeds to not learn a damn thing when she trusts another stranger. This one just happens to work out though, because they catch the cat, get the friend back, and our dynamic duo is set. Or trio if you really want to correct me. Episode 3. I want all of them. What's the best way to start an episode? No, 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 it's not what you're thinking. It's music montage. <laughs> References. Puppies. No, wait, sorry. Those are just corgis. Tulip's rat race is over as Cuteness grinds her journey to a halt, and me meet the king. I mean this. He is a king corgi. I extend to you my greetings. Hi, I'm Tulip. This is Atticus. A super serious voice in a very huggable body. I wish the episode could be just all about this, but this is a TV show and everything has to have meaning, so there's a giant monster here harassing the dogs by raising the water. Thank you, inciting incident, for ripping us away from the corgis. Man and beast join forces for more dog jokes. Now? No. You wanna do it? You wanna go inside? Yes. Stop doing that! Stop. Now, some people might complain that these are easy jokes to make. What else are they going to make jokes about? They're fucking dogs. Glitchy world mechanics are becoming more and more noticeable. They end up finally confronting the monster. Go to hell, red herring. Tulip finally takes a breath and starts to realize rushing forward has gotten her nowhere. Set up for later, events with the glowing orbs and the real monster. This is the Stewart. They're a robot octopus with machine gun for eyes. Please note that this show got away with machine gun eyes, yet every TV show now has to have cops with laser guns. Would y'all just please pick a rule book and stick with it? Furball nearly dies. Oddball singing is so bad that it makes the other machine run away. There's an actual really brilliant reason for why the singing works, but I won't tell you. Smart but dumb Tulip still hasn't figured out that the number is tied to her character development, but that's okay, because she's still growing anyway, whether she realizes it or not. And more importantly, our trio has become a quartet, with King Corgi joining them for belly rubs and vengeance. The best combo you can ask for. Episode 4, Adventure Time did it. The Italian car is cool, but the lack of logic is ruining Tulip's enjoyment. She's breaking her brain trying to rationalize an emotional experience. So the train gives her a car that's tailor-made to help her learn. Or in the last few weeks we haven't seen, this was the only car that mattered. And yes, this adventure takes months. In a car made entirely of crystals, the door is way out of reach with the locals being mute and unable to explain properly how the mini quest works. Okay, there's no reason to show you this line, but I just think it's neat. One one, that thing wasn't your friend. <gasps> Goodness, was it my mum? It was trying to hurt us. The question stands. Atticus puts it together that they need to sing emotionally to cause the stairs to appear. Unfortunately, the stone is a harsh critic, with no patience for folk, techno, or other songs you saw in the movies. Logic bugs still infecting the redhead's brain, seeing everything with no meaning behind it, giving up on emotional vulnerability. Tulip decides, nah, nah, I'm just gonna cheat the system. <laughs> Logic has failed yet again, so all she has left is emotions, because it wants to know how she's feeling, not how the song makes you feel. No other choices left, she's forced to sing Word Up by Cameo. Young pretty ladies around the world. It's cheesy, it's pointless, and her family used to sing on road trips, making it perfect. Plus she has friends there, removing the awkward so that she can just have fun, summoning a bigger rock monster, who must have phenomenal hearing. The door unlocked, and Teen Tulip is one step closer to closure. Also, Adventure Time did this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just... I've tried to keep quiet, but I, this one I just have to bring up. But Adventure Time had a very similar scenario, with a door needed emotionally charged music to open up, and also kind of had the similar premise with the train. It's like a more literal sense, but that shit was forced level grinding, so fuck it. Episode 5, Train Wreck Memories. 
Next time, Skip brings us to another car, except this one wasn't confusing or life-threatening, so the train swaps out for one that is. Nowhere else to go, they walk right into the hoarder cat's car. Yeah, she's up to something. Making the smart move to just walk away from the stranger making vague, unnerving threats. Except, in the coincidence that would make sleazebags blush, the cat knocks over a tape that has Tulip's name on it. And she just takes it at face value that it isn't a trap. Like, this girl girl needs to just assume everything is trying to kill her. Sing back to watch the VHS, that great piece of technology no one remembers hating. Evil Tate forces Tulip to start seeing her old memories, from Christmas to a dolphin park that had animal rights abuse written all over it. All these good times of Tulip with her non-divorced parents rapidly devolve into dream logic and jump scares. The insanity runs its course with the fear of death bringing up what really happened. That her happy family, surprise but wasn't so happy, with possible dead dolphins and bickering parents ruining kind of just all these stuff in her life. This admission leads to her memories coming together, her dad sleeping on the couch, getting the, and I'm gonna say this in quotes here, bad news from her folks, because sometimes divorce is just what the family needs. And also, please notice the visual divide between them, because I don't think it was obvious enough for everyone to see. So Tulip is a kid and of course takes us the wrong way, blaming her parents for ruining the family instead of accepting it. Tulip gets her epiphany and can finally get out of this episode. The pissed off flower is over the cat, numbers and the mystery. She may not be sugarcoating her memories, but our girl is still not dealing with her issues. Ditching this antique shop, our resident scallywag gets jumped by the face monster and a mystery line. Is this the main villain of the show? For now, yes, but the thing nearly kills a cat, and it's only through begging does she get to live. And good thing she does, because she gets to ruin another season later. Episode 6. One One wants you to live your best life so long as it's the one he picked for you. A few cars later, Tulip is showing no signs of starvation. Guess every car must have like a snack bar plus a spa. Hang to the next life-changing event. This place is a mishmash of gravity effects, talking turtles, and college. 1-1 OCD is hating this car. His nothing is as it should be, by his standards. He thinks it's broken, even though compared to everything else, this place is pretty tame. Turtles have made a perfectly functioning society around the shoddy design of the car. All this means, though, that they don't take One One's and Lil's attempts at fixing the place very kindly, especially when One One goes, eh, full evil. I have to help put things in order. It wouldn't be like this if I had just been better. Yeah, it's full evil. Ripping the car apart to correct it and killing everyone aboard to get the job done. Tulip talks the little overlord down, correcting his mistake and leaving a giant hole in the car. Because he's accepted responsibility. That doesn't mean he needs to fix it. Wanting to avoid the town from finding a way to strangle the little guy, the team leaves, but not before the Royals get a proper, we're the best, goodbye. One one is still acting shady, and it'd probably take him 30 seconds to get over Tulip's death. Episode 7, Season 2, Setup. All right. I've been waiting on this one, but we're talking about the mirror episode. Train fam are now in a car filled with reflective surfaces. Door won't open, and Tulip's reflection is suddenly talking. And she is, no, oh, how do I say this? Tired of being a tag along to an angsty teen. She wants her own life to angst over. Because as long as it's your suffering, it's somehow more important. Telling the sucker, telling the sucker that they need to switch sides to open the door, which based on the smart girl's track record, she goes with. Because death. <laughs> oh, surprise, surprise. Girl is now alone in the other reality with nothing to do but to call the cops. These are the mirror police, and they feel like they are from a completely different show. And I love them for it. Because they go from zero to murder immediately, and it's great. Locking up the human, they get their skin suits on to travel to the real world, because these things let them walk around freely and not be tied to mirrors. Kinda like this poor girl. Tulip, not wanting to get any more guilt on her conscience, escapes the grunge police and has a chat with her not-self. Getting called out for always avoiding her problems, Tulip finally gets to hear directly one of the lessons she needs to learn to get out of here and asks her other to take a leap of faith. Working together and getting haircuts, we get our season two protagonist out of the car thanks to a pocket mirror. She then ditches everyone else so that she can go be in season two. But we'll talk about that next week because it is way better than the first season. 
and I still think this one is great. But in other news, Tupa's made it to number three, and there's only three episodes left, so shit's about to go sideways. Episode eight, all, I mean this, all the death flags. Basic scene of everyone going through their daily routines, where friends now Tulip is gelling with her buddies, letting each one of them know how much they mean to her, keeping best boy Atticus looking regal, and helping one one stay clean. Bankrupting themselves to get to the kid's car, Tulip realizes she wants to go home, not to camp, has another sweet moment with Atticus where they tell each other, how much they, oh, he is gonna fucking die. Just hurry this up. Toy Story 4 guides them through the area till they hit the prize table, where after winning their thing, the stewardess is back and no one has their ticket. <laughs> if looks can kill, <laughs> am I right? The Spirit Away reference grabs Tulip after Atticus accomplishes a whole lot of nothing. Darth Vader with a hunch makes their grand appearance. Attacking my steward for months, and despite all of that, I still wanted to help you. She's been on the train for months. Her calves must be huge. Oh my god, that is so much walking. Retro Cyborg has been chasing after one one with the cat helping them out out of fear. <laughs> yeah. That happened. Robot does the abuser thing of making their horrible actions the victim's fault. Luckily, a king rises up to fight back and get old yellered. Conductor don't play no games, except turning Best Boy into a cockroach dog, which I guess all these monsters are products of the train then. Chasing Red Riding Hair, she is now able to trap the monster in the bubble. But the dog, he's gone. I give this 25 minutes before he comes back. Episode nine. Another trip down a different memory lane begins right after the eulogy ended with one one's comedy failing to help his friend who is burying all those emotions causing her number to rise as she loses progress. The cat is also here instead of strangling the life out of the thing she decides to let it talk and offer her a tape which the girl has no interest in till she does venturing into another one of those death traps. Inside, they wander into a British, I'm just gonna use my American stereotypes and assume it's boarding school, with this little odd couple of the dork and the hacker. They had great times together in college, after college. Dork had the conductor's voice modulator. They got married. So happy. Wait for it. Oh. Ah yes, there's a the sweet depression I watched this show for. Mystery Ball is controlling the playback. I'm gonna save you a bit of time. He's the original conductor, and that's why he has control of a lot of things. Amelia is the false one who hopped on the train after walking to the top of a building after the death of her lover. Nothing sus about that. We finally get to find out the plot relevant reason that Tulip needs to get one of those cannons to hotwire it to fix Atticus. Cat could have just said this. Where's the showmanship? Valid. This is just a noise Tulip because she, why would she want to empathize with her enemy? But she does so anyway, recognizing Amelia as another person who is in pain. And with this final push, making her number hit zero and finally having a way to get back home, she decides, let's not go back to the Midwest. Episode 10, was it worth it? Was it really? Was it worth canceling this show that was only five episodes a season that you could easily just make as a binge show? Come on, I, this of all things, this is what you cancel? The actual talent, the actual amazing writing, this is the thing that was number four on your most watched cartoons? You decide to get rid of this? Are you shitting me? Like, of all- I'm back, sorry about that, had to get it out. Making it to the engine room where the new cars are assembled, the cat smelling the danger decides not to be here for the final boss fight and bids everyone adieu, leaving a girl, her pet ball, and her other pet to deal with the heartbroken British woman, who is Lena Headey, and she's always great. Even if the show she's in, is shit. Trapping the woman in the wrong fantasy, Tulip gets the cannon but doesn't have the balls for it. Lady clearly has thought of this happening before, so she had a preset order for her robot to smash the screen. Pissed, she sends Tulip's portal away. More foreshadowing, and the final battle scramble is on. Turns out Amelia has been creating the turtle car to recreate her old life. This hasn't been working out in the slightest. 
but she still tries to tempt Tulip to the dark side by offering to make a car with her parents, minus the divorce. This might have worked nine episodes ago, but our girl has character development, and has also seen how shitty her previous work has been, so she has none of it. Getting the Corgi Orb and avoiding the 60s, Tulip gets Atticus back, and 1-1 finally finds his mom, completing his character arc of achieving absolute power. Party takes a quick break to appreciate the return of the dog, and 1-1 essentially being the boss of the train. I don't know if we'll find out how this thing was ever built, but my guess is aliens. Salty about heartache, Amelia is bitter over not having her husband, and Tulip gives her the talk, spelling out the theme of this season. I don't know what it's like to lose someone you love, but I do know that neither of us can go back to the way things were. We have to adapt to the changes in our lives. It's the only way things can get better. Amelia has some serious personal issues that we'll never get to see her go through. One one brought the portal back, and everyone says their goodbyes, leaving her friend behind to go back to living her life, while Amelia gets to look forward to an indentured redemption camp. <laughs> Tulip isn't living her best life, but she's living one she can accept, and that's something we can all learn from. Thank you all for watching! This has been Sarcastic Chorus, and you just finished my video on Infinity Train. Man, I should not have waited so long to make this. But hey, better late than never. And please, for real, go out there and support Infinity Train. Go out there, tweet about it, share about it, do everything you can, because I fucking love this show. So this time around, ignore me. Go out there and support Infinity Train. Love you all. Peace out.